Hiya, it's Wendy here again from Team Pitch Class and I hope you're doing okay. Today I'm going to be doing practical resin. Now I do like practical resin because it's practical. So I decided to do a soap dispenser. Now most people these days don't use bars of soap, they use liquid soap with a dispenser and you can customise these with resin if you've got a soap dispenser mould. Now I saw this soap dispenser mould on AliExpress. I bought the set which comes and it's a soap dispenser big part, the main body, the top part with a screw lid and it comes with two soap dispenser parts with little tubes. And when it arrived, bearing in mind it does take quite a long time to come from AliExpress, the main body had a damage, had a damage part inside. So I contacted them and I said, this is damaged, can I have a replacement please? And they said, no, it won't make any difference. And I said, yes, it will. <laughs> and eventually they said, okay then, we'll send you a replacement, but you'll buy something else with it. So I had to buy something else, which was okay. I mean, they, were, they had some other stuff that was fine. So I bought something else and they sent me a new part and this one's fine as far as I'm aware. So this is the body, this is the top and the dispenser part. Now. I've no idea if this is going to come together. Let's wait and see, won't we? So to start with, I'm going to put some Mylar flakes into Vuba Vista Ocean resin. This is a low viscosity resin. It cures in 48 hours, which means the Mylar flakes are probably going to sink to the bottom, but that's okay. I don't mind that. But it is a deep cast resin, so I know it won't overheat. Now I was quite surprised here how much resin this particular mould took. It took about 250 mil. Now that's quite a lot in my opinion. So it's quite thick sided with a smaller gap in the centre for the soap when you eventually fill it up. That did surprise me but I didn't check how much resin I needed at the beginning and I just kept making it until I had it full. Is it just me or do other people do that? Guesstimate the amount of resin that you need. I'm terrible at doing that. Very rare I check how much I actually need unless I know it's going to be a lot. In which case I need to get it right. So that one's going into the pressure pot onto the lid. Now I have some resin still made up which is the deep pour resin, the ocean. And I figured, you know what, it's got no mica powder in it, no pigment is in it. The only thing it's got in it is mylar flakes. I'm going to put it in the lid as well. It may take a little bit longer to cure, but it will cure. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just taking a micro brush to make sure there's no trapped air or bubbles around the screw part of the mould because the last thing I want is not to be able to screw in the pump mechanism into the resin base. So just topping it up before I put it in the pressure pot with the other piece. So 48 hours later and I'm taking it out of the pressure pot and I see that this black mark that's in the main body. Now at first when I saw it I thought it was a flyer and I wondered how a fly had got into my pressure pot. I have no idea what it is. It looks like dust but it doesn't matter. It's still pretty. It's nice that the lid has cured and wow I absolutely love it. So now it's time to demould the main body. This is a little bit more tricky. So I decided to put some oil on my hands and put it over the back so the silicon would slide over itself and it worked actually really well. Instead of putting the silicon inside the mould or the soapy water inside the mould, the silicon on the outside enabled it to slip over itself so it could come back easily. Then I didn't want to get slippery hands so I put some gloves on. But it does work really quite well. And because it's outside the mould, you're not getting all oil over the top of the piece you're demoulding. So a quick twist of the inside and out the mould pops. Now you can see there, there are some lines that the mould has left on the inside of this piece. But as soon as you put liquid in it, they disappear. 
so I shouldn't really worry about those if you get those on your mould. Now at this point I was a bit disappointed that the lid wasn't the same size as the base. But actually when I stuck them together I thought it looked quite a feature, distinctive, not the same. And I quite liked it. So now I'm trimming up around the edge because I need the edge to be as flat as possible to go on top of the jar because when you stick two pieces together they need to connect. If you notice, I'm trimming it like you would peel a potato or a carrot. I'm not getting the blade anywhere near my thumb. If you do do this, just be careful. So now I've got myself a little sand, sanding emery board on. I'm just going to file right the way around to make it as flat as possible after trimming it up. I then do go around with a little bit of sandpaper and, and sand the outside edge to make it rough so that when I stick it, it's got a grip surface. Now's the time to find out if the nozzle fits. After all this, I really hope it does. I always choose the easy route, so I decide to open the bag with a standing knife. Yeah, I nearly cut through the pipe, so it's a good job I stopped myself there. So I'm just going to assemble it together and see if it screws onto the lid. Well, the pipe fits. So that's a good start. Will it screw onto the lid? It actually screws on really easily. It's such a lovely fit. I was impressed. So I'm going to use some UV resin to attach the top to the base. Hopefully it'll be secure enough that I won't get any leaks. I can always put an extra bead round the edge if I'm worried. But I think UV resin, as long as you've scratched up the surface, will stick really well. This is my UV resin of choice. I'll put the link in the description below. It's really quick curing and it's super hard. That's why I love it. And I'm not getting paid to say that. It's just personal choice. That's the one I love to use. So I'm just putting a bead of resin around the outside edge of the lid. Then I'm going to turn it over and cure it through the lid. Now, because I'm using clear resin with Mylar Flakes, the UV light can get into there really easily and cure up really easily. If it was a solid colour, I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, I figured the best way to hold it was to put my finger through the hole and hold it like that. <laughs> it worked. Just getting it centred and then I'm going to flash cure it with my torch and put it in the sunshine, which we have today, which is a rarity, but we do have sunshine today. Yes, I know, we live in England, we don't have much sunshine, and when we do, it's either boiling hot or freezing cold. It's just something we live with. But there's the shot that proves we had sunshine. So I've put liquid soap in it, and I'm just going to screw on the pump. And I can't get the lid on. The pipe is too long. Okay, never mind, we can cut the pipe, it's okay. I nearly accidentally cut it when I got it out of the bag anyway, I know I can cut it. So I cut it a couple of times just to make sure it was the right length. I didn't want to cut it too short because you need it to suck up the soap from the bottom. But you also need it to be at an angle so it doesn't block because the suction will suck the bottom of the pot. Does that make sense? So once I was sure that I got the length right, then I decided to cut a snip off the corner of the pipe so it didn't block itself. So I finally got it put together and I'm going to need to test it to make sure it works. Well, I'm really happy with that. Well, I made it. <laughs> it came out all right, actually. The top doesn't quite meet the bottom in the same diameter, but it's got a nice kind of shape to it. The tube was a bit long, as you saw, I had to cut that down, but that's fine. It fits perfectly well. It works perfectly well. I put a little bit more sealer around the outside, the UV resin around the outside, just to seal it in completely. And yeah, I know all the Mylar flakes went to the top or the bottom, but I actually really like that. I think it's nice being able to see the, the color of the soap in, uh, inside. 
Now I was actually thinking to myself, how could I make this? Because there's a lot of resin in there. How could I make this cheaper? And I was thinking, well, you know, there's plenty of pebbles, stones, even the sand or glass, all sorts of things you could put in there to cut the resin down that you're using because that is a lot of resin. So it's quite expensive to make. I mean, I love it, don't get me wrong. And I'm so glad it worked. But there's a lot of resin in there. So yeah, I was thinking maybe lots of pebbles or stones or fish tank gravel. Hmm. Jesmanite. <laughs> Claire, you could make this in Jesmanite. Jez <laughs> it's really nice, actually. I like the mould. Now, I know I had issues with it originally, but yeah, we got there in the end. I'm going to put some steels up at the end. I hope you enjoyed this one. Come back and see what me what I'm up to next week. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.